Hello everyone and happy Women's Day everyone. Uh, I don't know if uh, some of you know this, some of you may not know this, but uh, not only is today Women's Day, it's also a day uh, that Jose Ruel Capablanca died. Uh, he died in uh, 1942 at the age of 53 and uh, well of course that's very sad, uh, but worry not we will be continuing our Capablanca saga and we will be marveling at his achievements for you know a very long time. Uh, getting back to this game, uh, another very nice game from the FIDE World Team Championship. Yesterday we saw uh, the first game we, we've shown, uh, it was uh, Nepo versus Yu Yangi here. Uh, Nepo achieved a brilliant victory uh, and, uh, well, basically brought Russia full, full two match points. Uh, but here we have a match India against China. Uh, here, uh, this is, uh, I believe, board two, uh, Yu Yangi versus uh, Surya Shekhar Ganguly. Uh, of India on board one, uh, Adiban faces Ding Liren, which uh, also was a very exciting game. I don't know if you've seen it, so I don't want to spoil anything, but I will mention uh, the results um, at, at the end of uh, this video. So uh, let's check it out. Uh, Yu Yangi, uh, the, uh, the guy who lost uh, yesterday against Nepo, plays d4, uh, for those of you who might not have seen the video. Uh, knight to f6, we have c4, e6, and now knight to c3. And not transposing into the queen's gambit decline, but rather bishop to b4, the Nimzo Indian defense. Uh, but white continues knight to f3, and we have d5 now. Uh, a bit, uh, you know, postponed, but we are back in the queen's gambit decline. Uh, Dura goes in defense now with the bishop to b4 move. C captures, pawn captures, and now queen to a4 check. Uh, trying to pick up the bishop, so black's response is forced, knight to c6, blocking check, defending the bishop, uh, bishop to g5 now, just developing, we have h6, and bishop captures, queen captures, and now comes e3, so uh, white decided to give up the bishop pair early on, he will have a very nice uh, and a very strong light square bishop, he can freely castle, and he will try to make use of his extra knights, uh, extra knight, sorry. Uh, we have castles by black and now bishop to e2. Bishop to d3 seems like a much more active move, but that's basically inviting bishop to g4 and here you just uh, have to go back, so why why, why waste the move? Uh, but on the other hand, bishop on g4 is not all that impressive. Maybe it's needed on e6 to guard the d5 pawn, so maybe this bishop to d3 back to e2, not, not such a terrible idea. Uh, but okay, in the game bishop to e2 immediately played, we have bishop to e6 now, helping out with the defense of the d5 pawn also. Uh, connecting rooks, uh, because once uh, the, the white king castles, this will be a threat. Uh, we have castles by white, and now comes a6. Uh, and rook f to c1. Uh, we have bishop to d6 now. The bishop is no longer needed here, as the king is no longer on e1. And now black transferred uh, the, the game basically to the king side, having a, a very strong bishop pair. Black will now try to create a king side attack. He wants to go knight e7, g5, bring the knight to g6. And from there, the knight will be very strong uh, with, uh, you know, uh, to help out with the attack. Queen to d1. And already this is move 13, but there are almost 100 games in the database with this exact same position. So this is still considered to, to, to be the basically standard theory of this opening. Uh, knight to e7. Ganguly continues with his plan. We have knight to a4 now. Uh, hoping to get this knight all the way to c5 to force, uh, force a trade here. Uh, black, of course, does not allow this. We have b6 and now b4. A very nice idea of how to uh, grab more space on the queen side because you cannot capture here your c7 pawn will be hanging so here after b4 uh, there have been other moves that have been played here in the database like rook f to b8 uh, was a move g5 Im immediately g5 uh, has been played here uh, but the move in the game is a new move for this position ganguly plays a5 and now we have a completely new game that was never played before uh, we have b5 now uh, and g5 and uh, I'll just uh, pause the video here uh, as I do have one photo of this moment and I think it, it was taken around this moment I don't know if it's exactly in this moment also by David Lada uh, it's the only one I have I don't have uh, there uh, the, that's board one Ding Liren versus uh, Adiban uh, but in the back you can see uh, Yu Yang Yi and his opponent is missing but I, I think the position is uh, about right and uh, it's the only one I have so you know do, do enjoy it to get more into the mood for the game. Uh, there we have it, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, so let's get back to this game. g5 played, knight to g6 as planned will be coming, and now knight to b2. The white knight is no longer needed on the edge of the board, uh, so white wants to bring it back into the game via knight b2 to d3. Uh, knight to g6 by black, and now knight to d3. And here rook a to e8. 
uh, we have uh, knight f to e1, uh, and now just h5. And this h5 move is very interesting. Uh, it's a uh, it's um, uh, the, the reason I really like it is because it's a uh, it's uh, really a human move, uh, very nicely done, uh, a very brave pawn sacrifice where you basically. Uh, say to white, uh, either I'm just gonna start, uh, you know, a massive attack here, or you can capture my pawn, I'm gonna go king g7, and have the semi-open uh, h-file for my rooks. Uh, and here, white grabs the pawn. Bishop captures on h5 is played, which is not a mistake, or, or anything, you know, it's a, it's a nice pawn, if you can defend, why not? Uh, king to g7, as planned, now the rook is coming all the way to the h-file, and here, uh, white has an option. Uh, in the game, h3 was played, but you could also play captures on g6, and after queen captures knight e5, uh, which uh, would allow black um, a very strong attack, but it seems white would be okay. Let's say queen h7, uh, and now just rook to c6, a very, a very nice rook lift. Uh, and after f6, attacking the knight, just knight here. And now if bishop captures, queen captures, you can even capture on h2, uh, but it's not going to be a problem. King f1, and now there's really no, no way to uh, successfully continue this king hunt. So white will be perfectly fine here. But it's uh, not something you want to allow. I mean, wh why allow such a thing? So first h3 was played, and now comes rook to h8. Uh, taking uh, control of the h file, uh, bishop to g4, we have bishop captures, and here queen captures was a must play move. Queen captures uh, was the best idea here, but uh, most likely Yuangi decided not to do it as it allows this rook to infiltrate, uh, you know, w with an attack on the queen, uh, so he decided to go h captures on g4, but h captures on g4 is a huge blunder, uh, which, uh, you know, now that I've told you it's a huge blunder now of course you understand what's going on uh, but just in case you don't feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out why this <laughs> move was a huge blunder and how black can take advantage of this position uh, i'll give you a couple of seconds as usual uh, for those of you who were able to do it congratulations you are an excellent sacrificer of rooks on e3 and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is Rook Captures on E3. And an excellent move. Uh, you can see that uh, if the Rook is captured, the Queen controls the entire F file. The Rook is controlling the entire H file. So there's bound to be something here. But uh, it's actually a forced mate. If you capture, uh, you can just sacrifice the Rook. Rook H1 check. Uh, the Queen controls the F file. You have to capture. And now Queen F1 will be checkmate as the Bishop controls the H2 square. So quite a lovely idea, this Rook to, H, uh, rook to E3 move. Uh, you cannot capture it. First, rook to c6. Now, any bishop to h2 ideas with check uh, will also uh, come with an attack on the black queen. Uh, but it is it is what you want to do. We have bishop to h2 check, king to f1 now. And here, uh, Ganguly just tries bishop to g g3. Uh, just, you know, uh, the good old, uh, you know, you take my queen, I'm going to checkmate you with rook to h1. Uh, but of course, uh, Yuangi does not fall for this. He just repeats, king to g1. And here we have uh, one of the first repetition of moves as uh, Ganguly was, uh, well, most likely trying to reach time control so he would have uh, more time to enjoy his better position. Uh, bishop to h2 check was played, king to f1, and now bishop to g3, again going for this idea. King to g1, and now if you repeat it, you would have a threefold repetition, but uh, the best idea was not now, you don't want to allow threefold repetition, but in one of the previous uh, moves, after bishop to h2, king f1, bishop back to d6, but now that the king is on f1, uh, it's a different story. If the king repeats, now you go rook to e6, you get the rook out of harm's way, and now white just has a really difficult game. Whatever he plays, let's say queen f3, maybe you want to try trade queens, knight f4. And now if captures, captures, it's just a lost position for black. Queen h4 is coming to h1. Not a lot of uh, ways you, you can stop this. So it's really just, it would be just winning for black. Uh, but Ganguly had a different plan. He played queen captures on d4. Uh, well, probably uh, he, he didn't find anything better. Uh, but uh, most likely if he repeated, it would also be a threefold repetition. So you can't go for that. But this allows white to trade off a few pieces and, uh, well, survive for the moment. Knight to c2 attacks the queen and the rook. Uh, we have bishop to h2 check first, and now you can't go uh, king to f1 here. Gangul is just testing Yu and Yi. Uh, if he would go king f1, then queen captures comes with check. Now you have to capture, and you're, you're just down a piece. So now he has to go king to h1, uh, and now queen to f bishop to f4. Uh, a discovered check from the rook, king to g1, and now once again a repetition of moves. 
king to h1, bishop to f4, check, king g1, and only now queen captures on d3. So it's on, already move 33, we are reaching time control, that is move 40. Uh, but now white can grab the rook. Uh, knight captures, we have bishop to h2, check, once again. Uh, king to h1, and now bishop to e5, check. King to g1, now bishop to h2, check, once again. King to h1, and now finally uh, we have queen captures on b5. So uh, what's uh, what's the result here? You can see that white has two rooks, a knight and a queen, and black has a queen, a knight, a bishop, and a rook. So white is actually up material, uh, but his position isn't all that impressive. Here, uh, white played rook a to c1. Better was knight to f5 check immediately. You don't want to allow black to prevent this check, uh, which white did. White played first rook a to c1, double rooks here. Uh, the idea is at some point to play g3 and maybe be able to capture on c7, uh, but it's not not really possible as whenever this bishop moves it will be with check uh bishop to g3 check king to g1 and now bishop to h2 check once again king h1 and now knight to e7 comes with an attack on the rook but also prevents this knight to f5 check uh which is uh, even more important for black for black uh, uh yuangi played g3 he wants to play king to g2 and now just knight captures on c6 white decided to give back um, uh, the exchange uh, knight to f5 check uh, for this very nice check king to f8 and now comes king to g2 uh, we have bishop captures on g3 that bishop isn't really going anywhere uh, so you might as well trade it knight captures on g3 and now rook to h6 so now when everything is said and done you can see that white survived the attack but he's down three pawns and it's not going to be uh, an easy game from here on we have knight to f5 attacks the rook rook to e6 and now queen to f3 uh, white is still trying to fight this game we have queen to b2 attacks the rook uh, rook has to move we have rook to h1 with ideas of infiltrating via the back rank uh, and then now knight to e7 black now wants to trade down and enjoy his uh, uh, queen and rook endgame with three th three extra pawns uh, queen g3 uh, we have knight captures, pawn captures, and now rook to e2. So here black just says you are not leaving uh, with the queen. The queen must stay here to keep an eye on the f2 pawn. And I don't really care what you do with your h1 rook. Uh, so queen to f3 here, uh, attacking the pawn here. But it's not really, I mean, you constantly have to keep an eye on this pawn. Uh, we have queen to e5 now, just improving the position, centralizing your, your queen there, you know, uh, always, everyone always emphasizes this, but it's really, really important to centralize your queen, sometimes you, you can even sacrifice a pawn just to centralize your queen, it will be well worth it. Uh, we have f6 now, uh, Yu Yangi threatens rook to h8 checkmate, so you have to avoid this, we have king to e8, and now rook to h8 check, king d7, and now rook to f8, so this rook infiltrated very nicely, but... Um, uh, it's, it will not be uh, of any help. Uh, queen to e6, defending the pawn here, and now queen to h5, uh, preparing to capture the pawn here, but now comes queen e4 check. And now white really doesn't have all that many options. If he goes something like king g3, then just queen f4 check, king h3, queen captures, and you have no good defense against this. Uh, whatever you play, either queen captures uh, on f7 or rook captures on f7. Uh, doesn't really do anything king c6 and now there are no more uh, no more checks here that you can use uh, e8 is covered by the rook so next you're just getting checkmated queen h2 king, uh, rook g2 uh, so after this queen to e4 move white decided to block with the queen but now it's just an end game where you're up three pawns queen captures we have uh, king captures uh, on f3 and now rook captures on a2 rook captures on f7 with check and now king to e6 captures captures and now rook to c6 check black a uh, white will win the b6 pawn but uh, still king f5 rook captures and now uh, it's uh, three pawns against one okay it's two extra pawns but quite enough for uh, a grandmaster to end this game rook a3 check was played uh, we have uh, king to e2 uh, and then now comes a4 uh, we have rook to d6 going after the pawn just king e4 defending the pawn now rook to e6 check king d4 uh, rook to g6 going after the pawn, but uh, it doesn't matter for black. Black has uh, plenty of material. Rook a2 check, king f3, and now just a3. Uh, so black doesn't mind giving up this pawn as it's uh, you know not an important part of the game anymore. And after rook to c2, it was on this move, uh, it was in this position on move 66 uh, that uh, Chinese grandmaster Yu Yangi resigned the game. 
So uh, an excellent victory uh, for uh, Sura Shekhar Ganguly. Uh, White resigned as whatever he plays is just a2, a1. I mean, you have to block it somehow. Uh, now king c3, after the king comes to b2, the pawn will promote. You can't really do anything. Even the d pawn is very dangerous. Uh, not really much you can do here. King g3, you can just move the rook or king, but uh, th there are no useful moves, uh, just king here, and you will now promote the pawn and win the game. Uh, so yeah, after rook to c2, a wonderful victory for, for the Chinese grandmaster, uh, sorry, for the Indian grandmaster, and uh, uh, like I mentioned, China had a, uh, a very close match against the United States that China lost, then China faced Russia, also lost uh, due to that uh, victory over ne uh, Nepo had over Yu Yangi, and now uh, Yu Yangi once again loses against Suira Shekhar Ganguly, but... Uh, uh, like I said, I will now spoil the results a bit. I don't know if any of you are following the championship, uh, but um, uh, Bu Ziangji uh, won his game on, on uh, board four for China, so uh, China did not lose this match against India. The match was a draw. Uh, but interestingly, uh, Baskaran Adiban, uh, he drew his game against Ding Liren, and now uh, in the live ratings, he has crossed the 2700 rating threshold, so he has now, uh, now joined the 2700 club. So big, uh, you know, big success for uh, for Adiban, and uh, we're gonna cover one more game uh, today from from the World uh, FIDE World Team Championship, and uh, we're gonna talk a bit more about the team results. Then, uh, and, uh, Grindelius had a really, really awesome victory in his game, so we're definitely gonna show that. Uh, but yeah, it it all went downhill here after this. Uh, instead of queen captures on g4. Uh, H captures on G4 was played, which allowed this very nice rook sacrifice, and that that was just it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Russell Lloyd, Dave Bohr, uh, Andrew Slater, and Informed for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, most likely with one more game from the FIDE World Team Championship, uh, but also still figuring out uh, in which direction to continue the Capablanca saga. And uh, I know you, uh, a lot of you are wondering where is the subscribers video. It's uh, almost done, so expect it like next week, most probably. I know I said I, I will publish it most likely in January, but uh, you know, yeah, better not rush anything. Uh, so it you know it's a, as good as it can be in the end. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.